Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to see everybody this morning. Happy New Year to y'all. Uh, pray your uh, New Year was a a welcomed event. Uh, but you know, uh, life starts here, doesn't it? Uh, but I, my name is Pastor Randy Scott with Fire, Iron Faith Fellowship Church. Uh, good to be with everybody this morning. Uh, took, did take a couple of days off and just to kind of refresh and renew. Uh, spent some time with family. Uh, get some family time now. We're you know we're back in the saddle here, uh, getting going. So uh, good morning, Yvonne. How you doing? Happy New Year! And uh, I want to talk to you this morning about something that we all deal with, and that's pride. Uh, you see the bottom ribbon, though, know, pride. You know they question mark, and, and some people think they don't have pride. Everybody struggles with pride, but uh, uh, you can control your pride, or your pride is going to control you. And when pride controls you, that means you're right in spite of everything else. You may even know you're wrong, but you're bound and determined to be right. And someone may come and talk to you about that and make some suggestions, but you no more receive that than the man in the moon. That's pride. That's pride. And that's when struggles begin, uh, when we don't become honest with ourselves and deal with, uh, uh, deal with this pride situation. And we've all struggled with it. We've all struggled with it. I've struggled with it. I've had to deal with it. I've had to repent of it. But pride is a terrible thing if it's used in a wrong way. You can have pride in things uh, in a healthy manner, but it's when pride takes control that you have to be right. Even when you know you're wrong, that's a problem. And we run into that. And I've run into people, you know, I've, uh, I've come to a place in my life, especially as a pastor, that I'll make a suggestion. It, it, almost like the Lord will lay something on my heart to help somebody out or, or give them a healthy suggestion. And I can tell by their response to me whether they heard me or not or whether they listened or not or whether they were willing or not. Most times they'll respond back in a, such a such a way that, you know, like they have no intention of even really, truly praying about what was suggested to them. That's pride. That's pride because, you know, most most people going to do it their way. Uh, anyhow, no matter what you tell them, you can show them the scripture. You can show them, uh, you can come alongside them and share your experience that, that you had to learn to listen to stuff, but they're bound and determined that you can say what you want to. They'll agree with you. They will even agree with you, but yet they have no intention of following any kind of counsel or following any kind of lead. Uh, so it's very important that we understand the difference between pride and humility. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's not a bad thing to step back and say, you know, some, I, I, I was a little wrong there. You know, I, I really wanted my way. I wanted it done my way, but I realized that my way wasn't the best way. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? As a pastor, I've had to do those kind of things. Let me share you a quick testimony. I don't want to keep everybody too long. I keep trying to keep these things short. But a number of months ago when this COVID thing broke out, I was one of those pastors. I was very, very adamant that I was not going to close the church, not going to close the church. And I had a very gentle man in our fellowship who's in the medical profession. And the way he presented it to me just humbled me greatly. He said, Pastor, he said, I really wish you would reconsider and pray about this again. Would you be willing to do that for me? He said, I'm in the medical field. And he said, I really wish you would consider doing that. And, you know, the, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart through that. Now, I had a choice to make. I made a statement. I made a statement on Facebook. And my congregation that the Lord has blessed me with could verify that I made a statement on Facebook. I was not going to shut the church down. This is ridiculous kind of thing. I had to go back and retract that. I had to go back. What? Okay. Now I could have had pride could have driven me to say, wait a minute. Now, if I go back and retract what I just said, I'm being wishy-washy. No, I wasn't worried about that. It wasn't worried about me being right. It was about more about God being right and me doing the right thing. And that guy's gentle spirit. And we prayed about that. And I came back to the elders and I said, you know, the Lord really spoke to my heart. And the word wisdom uh, came out of this thing. The word wisdom came out of this thing. So I said, guys, let's use some wisdom. Let's let's make an effort. Let's let's uh, comply for a short period of time and see what happens. And we did. Uh, reluctantly, we did. Uh, and it was a good move. You know, we we uh, we listened to the Lord on this kind of thing. And of course, again, we listened to the Lord, too, when we reopened. And uh, some people may doubt that. That's that's between you and God. Uh, uh, we humbly prayed after I, we learned that lesson. Uh, we prayed through this thing and came back and felt it was time to to do what we do. And 
you know, everybody's not going to agree with you. But the bottom line was I could have let pride drive me, okay, and make a bad mistake. And I loved his approach to me and, and his ask to reconsider. So sometimes, you know, when someone makes a suggestion to us and we really think about it, you're like, you know, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I may even be right here. You know, I may be even be right. But you know what? I'm going to pray about that a little bit longer. And, you know, I might need to reverse course. Nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean you were confused in your decision making. That means you took time to rethink it a little bit and ask God to help you through. Now, we know the lost world out there. They, they, they're prideful all day long. Look at, and look at this. Look at the turmoil they're in. Get it? God doesn't want the church to be in turmoil like that. He wants you to be in turmoil like that. He wants you to be able to go through this tumultuous life. And did I say that correctly? Tumultuous life, you know, with the peace of God in your heart, not because as the world gives peace, but because the way he gives peace. Okay. That's how he wants us to walk. He doesn't want us to walk in a prideful life. He wants us to, to listen to counsel, to wise counsel, and for us to stop and back up and take a look. We may have to change our decisions and our opinions, but guess what? We're going to walk away with a little more peace in our lives. But let me go to Proverbs uh, chapter 12. I'm going to read a verse here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Now, this is strong. This is strong wording. Listen to this. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Let me read that again. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Wouldn't you rather be wise than a fool? Think about that. I would. Uh, you know, I very well could have been a fool a number of months back, way back in March, uh, when my pride was driving me to make that decision. Uh, but yet the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, back up, be wise, be smart. Listen to what this young man said and we pray about this. And I did pray about this and came back to the elders. We made that decision. So, uh, you know, God, uh, and listen to verse 16, chapter 16 of Proverbs. Listen to this. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I had a plan, but the Lord redirected those steps. So we've got to be obedient to who? To God first and foremost, but you got to know it's God. You got to spend time before God to know it's God. You've heard me say many times, folks, that, you don't make a major decision. You don't do anything until you come before God and you can stand up with such total peace that there's no more question. That's when you know you've met with God. Think about that. One more verse of Proverbs, and it's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before what? Destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Wow, God doesn't want us to fall. OK, God doesn't want us to experience destruction, but we do that many, many times because we will not humble ourselves before God. Our pride is more important. We don't want somebody to look down their nose at us and they don't, we don't want somebody to, to think that we were wrong. OK, I don't want to be right on everything. Sometimes I need to be wrong to learn that I'm not God. And that's what he wants us to think about. So I hope that is helpful to somebody this morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, my goodness, Yvonne, how you doing? Harry, Roseanne, how you doing? Charlie, Mark, brother Mark, it's good to see you. CJ, uh, Julie, hi, hey, good morning, Julie. Uh, uh, Aaron, Kelly Moore is on here this morning. Leroy Farner, good to see you. Cousin Nora, good to see everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it's good to have you back. It's good to be back in the saddle here. Uh, my bride's on this morning. Good morning, honey. I love you too. Uh, but let's work on our pride. Let's work on our pride. Don't say you don't have any because every one of us has to deal with it, but it can be changed. It can be a healthy pride or it can be an unhealthy pride. And that's what you want to think about. Remember the fool. Okay. Let me read that one more time before I close. I know I'm taking a little extra time here. It says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Okay. But he who heeds counsel is wise. When someone comes to you with something that's not so far fetched, take time to rethink. And it's all right to come back and say, you know something, boy, I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I listened. And I'm, I'm going to follow your advice because I might have messed up. Better to back up and humble yourself and say I was wrong than to, to head in to the destructive situation you may head into. So let's think about that, guys. Hope you have a, a great day. Love you all. Be blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we bless you for who you are. And Father, I pray that you would break down that spirit of false pride, a spirit of pride, Lord, that that 
uh, wants us to feel like we're in control. We're in control of every situation. And Father, that we have to be right in every situation and everyone else is wrong uh, because we want to be in the forefront. We want to be uh, the popular person. We want to be that person that's getting all the attention. And that's not what's important with you. What's important with you is that we can come to a place to say, hey, we was wrong. I need to change course. I need to change direction. His father, just like the lost person right now that has such a pride saying, I don't need Jesus as Lord and Savior. I don't need to be saved. You know, this is the best it's going to get. Father, we know better than that. We want people saved. We need to be an example, a shining example to a lost and dying world. Father, that someone out there would come to know you as Lord and Savior. You said in your word that the angels rejoice over one sinner that repents. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you for this time. Thank you for these tidbits. Father, it's been such a pleasure to serve you in this uh, in this area. And I pray that hearts are being blessed, that we're learning a little bit of something about ourselves each day as we get together. So be with them, guide us and direct us as we go out through our day that we think about this pride situation in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, a little longer today, but that's all right. I uh, took a day off. I'm trying to catch up on <laughs> everything. So love you guys. And guess what? We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for some more morning tidbits. Be blessed. Don't stress. Give God the mess.